Okay. Hi, Chris Larson here with Happy Hookers Detroit. Holla at your hookers, say what? All right. So I'm going to start trying to do some of these live streaming videos. I'm going to try to get used to this headset because I am corded. But um, usually if I have multiple machines going on at one time, it gets really loud in here. Plus, I like to listen to my funky jams. And you can't listen to funky jams with copyrights on them while you're working. And I need to work with some music. So I'm going to try to get used to this little headphone action. And then uh, we'll go from there. Emma Gemma. All right. So do, 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 do. you're going to have to bear with me. This is all an experimental run. So, right now, what I have here, we're going to come down to the floor, bam, 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 is the Brother 270 Electronet. All right, here, I will show you what it looks like. Bam. <coughs> this is a Brother 270 Electronet. This is one of the rarer knitting machines because it is the only bulky electronic knitting machine. Um, what that means is there is a bulky gauge and a standard gauge. Your bulky gauge will take most of your four ply yarn. Standard gauge will not. Standard gauge is more cone yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and take the top off of this bad boy here. You can see what we have going on. All right. So this is my row counter. Yay, row counter. And you can see all my needle beds. These needles are slightly larger than the standard gauge needles. Now, today I'm going to be installing this onto a KE100. The KE100 is the Motorola. All right, so you can see here, KE100. This um, basically just moves the shuttle back and forth so that I don't have to, and then I'm working on a different machine. So it is automated. But it's still a lot of handwork. It's just basically going back and forth for me so I can make large swaths of fabric. And also, I'm usually working on a secondary machine while that's going on. All right. So, first off, we have doo -doo 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 -doo, these little clips here. Bam, bam, bam. So, I'm going to have to line up the machine on these clips, make sure that they are fully out. I'm going to line that up on there, clip it in. I usually have a pair of scissors on here. Oh, yeah. All right, so these things are not light, but I am a strong woman. So let me get underneath here. Make sure that it's fully extended out. I'm using the S clips. If you're putting this on a standard table, you would be using your C clip. Get up under here. Side one, side two, drop it on. All right. Line that up. I'm just going to screw these down. One and two. So now I am mounted onto the machine, which is a nice thing, right? All right. Then usually what I do is I take this, I set it on the back, and I use this to hold my yarns and hold my other stuff while I'm doing my knitting. All right, come on with me up over here. How about right there? Oh, that looks good. Not bad, not bad. So, phase one. Oops. Haha, I just got snagged the first time. Do, do, do. Here, maybe if I clip this on here. No, I'm just going to let it hang. Or TV trick. Stick it under there. All right. So, I have that in. Now, the next step is your arm. So I have my arm right here. I'm going to step that there. I'm going to get my bad boy to plug it in. And where is my shuttle? Probably should have done all of this stuff before going live, but hey, that's what live is for, right? Cleaning supplies and weights. Do, do. Do, 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 do. We're just going to steal this one off of this machine because that's what we do around here. All right, set you back down. Bada boom, bada bing. Here we go. So I'm going to take my carriage, slide it on here. Now, if you have your carriage out of the box, see this 
metal handle that's behind here. So that is an attachment. You have to take the handle off by unscrewing these little screws here. Pull the handle off, put this metal piece on there because that metal piece there hooks in right there. So you can see how that just kind of hooks right in there and now it's set up to go that way. All right, now I'm gonna plug this bad boy in. In the wall. It's like carrying around a baby. I got this thing over here. You're not really seeing anything, but whatever. We'll figure it out. You know, the first one's always different. Um, this is the freaking 260. This is a 260. This is not the 270. Crazy town. All right. Well, I guess. So this is the 260. The 260, I had the wrong lid on it. My bad. Um, that means that it is a punch card. It is a bulky punch card. So that is the workhorse, not Lucille. Um, that means... Let me find an arm here. You know what? I'll pull one down off here. One thing you'll find out about us machine knitters is we've got stashes and stashes of spare parts. Not that one. See, this is my uh, stash of arms up here. Uh, we're going to go with this one. That looks good. Going to go ahead. So that'll be easy. We don't have anything to plug in on this one. So let me bring you around this way. Do, 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 do. Can you see? Ha ha. All right. See this little metal arm here? Boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. This is going to go straight in here. And I'm going to go yeah, this way. In over here get it down in there boom then I'm gonna tighten this up tighten that up bam bam now I'm gonna take this bad boy so these are affectionately called rabbit ears I wonder why maybe because they got rabbit ears and I'm going to take this and slide it up on here. Now what I use the workforce is, is the workhorse for is just your strand, standard straight knitting. Um, it doesn't do any fancy patterning because I don't know where the punch cards are, but it does do just straight stocking knit. All right, let me run around this way. And a lot of the stuff I do, like the pants, so that's what I'm going to be making today because that's machine I set up. I'm going to be making pants. Bam! She's plugged in. And this is plugged in. Oh, we cooking with Wesson now, as my daddy would say. Cooking with Wesson. All right. So, and where did I put the counter? So I'm going to put my uh, row counter back on here. It just kind of slides on like that. Make sure that this is down. It catches it. Nope. That catches it. All right. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and lace this up. What color do you guys wanna do? How about some annoying bright orange pants? Is that annoying and orange enough for you? Oh, I just love Halloween. <laughs> All right, so. There we go. That's not a bad view. I'm going to do cone yarn. Set it right there. I'm going to run it up through here. Up through here. Across here. Under, 
over and around. All right, this cone is a little too big to go right there, so I'm going to set it on the ground. All right. So we're just going to knit out a test swatch here, and then once I do the test swatch, I usually steam it, and then once it's steamed, I can do a uh, row count, figure out my gauge, and then from there, I can design the patterns. All right, let's see if this table is going to work. Bring it on in. All right, not bad, not bad. Can you see my hands and my fingers? There we go. All right, generally for test swatches, I am going to do a 20 by 20. Reset your counter to zero always. And 20 by 20. Pull those needles forward, as you can see. Bam, take this. Now, a lot of people have problems with the cast on. If you've ever worked with yarn, you know how to do this simple slip knot. Bing! Leave yourself a little bit of a tail. Now, what I'm going to do here is called an E-wrap cast on. Basically, you go underneath the needle, over and around it. And you can't see that, so let's see if we put you somewhere else. Again, this is my first time, so don't judge. Well, if we come over here, uh, right there. Can you see my hands? Under, over, under, over. Now I do this a lot, so I am super duper fast. Yeah, and again, I just retooled the sweatshop, so everything's in a little bit of disarray, but that's what today is for. And I figure if I'm in here doing this, I might as well be hanging out with the internet and you guys out there, and maybe we can have some fun together. Put it up in here. Bam. All right. Cast on comb. Cast on combs are really important. This basically holds the yarn down so that it doesn't jump up off of the hooks. And we have weights. All right. Wait for this. And we also use these claw weights. Claw weights also hold down the yarn so that that doesn't jump off again. All right. I like this angle better. There we go. So I'm going to take my tail pull it up and hide it underneath the claw weight. That keeps it from slipping off. And I'm going to go over here and put one down too. All right, row counter is at zero. <laughs> um, let's start with lucky number seven, tension. I've got a tension dial there. And let's see if she wants to knit. Oh. Always make sure all of your needles are back in the non-working position unless you want them to be working, a.k.a. knitting. One. This last one, you kind of sometimes have to do manually. Come here, baby. Come to mama. There you go. There you go. Now my string got underneath there, so I'm going to pull that out. All right, make sure your comb's on. Everything's holding down. Nope. Get to your home. And we are good to rock and roll. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now to make sure my motor is correctly aligned, I'm going to go ahead and crank that bad boy on. We have power. And since that is 10, I'm going to knit to 30. Oh, I'll knit to 40. Why not? Let's do a 50. 50 swatch. Put that five and five. I'll get better at showing you guys that. And we are going to make sure all our safeties are engaged. The magic of the KE100. I like to knit it, knit it. I like to knit it, knit it. I like to knit it, knit it. So generally while this machine is working, I would be going over to another machine and starting that up and knitting on two machines simultaneously. Or I would be steaming or sewing. This basically is like the best assistant I could ever have. Cause, well, not ever. I do want an assistant that's a human one day. But as far as machine goes, it just goes back and forth, back and forth, making my life nice and easy. Next, I'm going to show you how to cast this bad boy off. 
And then we've gone from out of the box to on the machine and knitted a um, 40 by 50 row swatch. That's 40 by 40. Hey -oh. Um, I'm going to have my products for sale on www.hhdclothing.com. Happy Hookers Detroit, hhdclothing.com. Um, this year for um, Run Fair and for all of our enjoyments, I'm going to be doing a lot of the um, long janes, which are basically long john, knitted long johns for women. They make your butt look really nice. I'm just saying. All right. So we have reached row 50. You can see on the counter, 50. All right. So in order to cast off, what I'm going to do, pull my yarn out of the rabbit ears, pull it out of the carriage, and then I just kind of lay it across the back. Pull all of these forward. And again, you're not going to be able to see my hands, so let's reverse, reverse. hey -o. Come on over here. It's not the prettiest shot because you got the lights in the background there, but let me see what I can do to block it. All right. Now, inside here will be all of my tools. If I was a smart, good girl and put them all away in there, which, can you guess, did I do it? No, I did not. I didn't even know what machine this was when I opened it up. So let's grab a tool. Again, we're going to go back over here to Grease Lightning. Grab me out a latch hook tool. See, it's knitting, but I'm still hooking. All right, now we're back over here. Ta-da! So in order to cast off, what you want to do is you put the hook onto the other hook, line it up like that, pull it back to where you're transferring the loop onto the next one, place the yarn inside of the loop, and crochet it off. So let me see here. How about if we come up right there? And now you can kind of see. There we go. Look at that camera angles. So hook inside a hook, pull it back through, and crochet off. You want to make sure you do this really loose because if you do it too tight, then you're going to have a really hard edge on one side and a loose edge on the other, making more of a trapezoid than a square. Happy hookers. Happy hookers. Happy hookers. Happy hookers, Detroit. Yeah. So that song takes approximately 25 stitches for me to sing. That's nice to know. Whoopsie. Don't miss. Do, do, do. A little bit more slack here. Chaka -ka. There we go. And on the last one, I just do one little extra for security reasons. Stick that in there. And I'm just going to break that yarn, pull it through. And take my weights off. Pull off my comb. And, ta-da, I have just knitted a swath of fabric. Yay. Hence why I call myself more of a textile manufacturer than I do a craft knitter because I just whip that out pretty quick, right? It's nice and gauzy. Boop -ba -doop -ba -doo. And now from here, I can steam this out, figure out the sizing on it, and then make a pair of pants. So, uh, yeah, that's it for right now. This is Christina Larson with Happy Hookers Detroit. I'm going to be doing this all day long and, you know, whenever I feel like it. I did buy a webcam. It is not compatible with my Chromebook, though. Shucks. So, I mean, this camera seems to be working all right. The headset's a good idea. And uh, I might be streaming from my laptop. And also, we're going to test, like, having one machine running, me talking on here, the noise, all of that stuff. So for right now, this is Christina Larson with Happy Hookers Detroit signing off. Do, 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 do. I don't know why I just sang McDonald's. I guess I'm hungry. <laughs>